You're watching the Intel Network and Edge V Summit series with our focus today on 5G. How can the adoption of 5G core technology result in the performance and innovation needed to deliver dynamic new services whilst also consuming less energy than current 4G core? How should CSPs go about evolving their networks to support a dual mode 5G core? Well, joining me now is Arvinda Anand, who is Vice President, Head of Architecture, Technology and End-to-End -end Solutions at Ericsson. Arvinda, very nice to meet you. Thank you so much. Great meeting you too. With this dramatic shift we are seeing for new business opportunities from 5G, what are the various enabling technologies for the different phases of service lifecycle? Great question. As uh, we all know, paradigms are shifting for with 5G bringing a lot of new use cases and especially targeting the enterprise and even for consumers. The flexibility and agility will be the key because uh, the requirement for providing those use cases on a distributed architecture and put a workload depending on the use case, software would be the key. When you talk about the life cycle, when we talk about the life cycle where you talk about the innovation, design, uptake, scale, and total cost of ownership, you see there are four key enablers. One is automation. The first one is automation. When I talk about automation, everything has to be uh, software driven. When you talk about software driven infrastructure, software defined infrastructure, or where orchestration, assurance, AI, ML driven, where you kind of bring down the repetitive task, more man manual task, and hand over to more automation kind of use cases. That's number one. And the second is the cloud native transformation. Cloud native itself is resilient in nature, provides a, a complement to automation. It's, nat it's by nature scalable and modular, it's microservices, and it complements the automation when it provides the flexibility to do quick upgrades and other things. The third enabler I see is the continuous integration and deployment, CICD. As we get into 5G, you'll see a lot of new use cases. When we work from 4G, 4G was more kind of targeted towards mature use cases. With 5G, a lot of new use cases, so you need to drive those features, fixes, and into the environment. So you need a platform of flexibility and CICD provides that kind of automation where you can do upgrades, apply the upgrades more in automatic fashion and push the software into the network. And the fourth is network slicing. Network slicing by definition is a logical uh, network. It's a segregated logical network over the same infrastructure. It provides that segregation, isolation of resources. So it provides that flexibility for you to configure that network slice in a very separate and a sandbox environment. And you'll see a lot of new business use cases also coming across network slicing. So these are the four, four main enablers. Uh, you, every service provider has to evolve in their new ways of working and choose the best technology to harness the best out of 5G. Ericsson has a very long and successful history in telecoms. How has that legacy and experience helped as networks evolve? Yes, thank you. Uh, as you know, Ericsson has been in uh, telecom for 140 years. Uh, Ericsson has been learning from every G shift, all the major shifts. I think 5G is different. Uh, over the years, uh, from building the first telephone to serving the network, we serves the large population of uh, on the data. For Ericsson has been forefront, our forefront in innovation and also serving the network ecosystem. Uh, when it comes to uh, over the years of success, we I just want to put those numbers here in terms of our 5G footprint. 97 commercial agreements. Out of 97, 55 are publicly announced agree, uh, contracts and 45 are, are the live networks. Uh, they are either on Ericsson radio or core in, in some cases, both. Our history has definitely uh, helped us over the history. We have built a lot of great collaboration. One example is Intel, collaboration with vendors, service providers, partners, and that's evolving day by day. Second thing is that our competence over the years, uh, are we are ready 
uh, when it comes to help our service providers and partners to our switch to 5G uh, in terms of their pragmatic approach. And the third thing we have invested over the years uh, in to handle this challenge in terms of building our center of excellence, 5G labs, hubs, factories. You heard about the 5G factory in Dallas. So, and on top of that, Ericsson has a full portfolio uh, running from access radio transport infrastructure, where we are very actively working with our Intel partners and packet core communication services, OSS. In OSS, we have a full suite of orchestration, assurance, AI, ML, and BSS, business support solution, billing, charging, mediation, auto care. And on top of that, Ericsson has a very strong managed services where we have Ericsson operation engine. So as you see, though we have a full stack, uh, Ericsson has been uh, very strong on standard compliances. We've been spearheading in many standard bodies, you probably, uh, in, whether it's DM Forum, 3GPP, or HC Mano. Uh, though being a full portfolio, we are very, very multi-vendor agnostic. In terms of uh, working with our service providers, you can see uh, we have a lot of proof point where we have working in a very multi-vendor ecosystem, uh, which gives a flexibility to our service providers. And it also gives us an advantage to look at end-to-end -end alignment in terms of what is needed by the service providers. And it helps us to provide them pragmatic uh, suggestions, approaches when they move from 4G to 5G, help them to bring the automation aspect, why it's so important. When we talk about software-defined infrastructure or we talk about software-defined networking and other automation aspect, why it's so important because we know the full end how that would end up. And also helping the monetization, how to use the network to monetize. That's going to be the key uh, asset for our service providers. So as you can see, our history, our, our successful history has brought us to a point where uh, we are working with our partners, uh, with our ecosystem and our service providers uh, to help this 5G switch make easy. Great. Well, let, let's focus on that for a moment. You know, how has Ericsson helped its customers overcome the challenges that are associated with moving from 4G to 5G core? Yes, I think uh, when customers are moving from 4G to 5G, uh, I think there are a few things we have, the, every customer service provider has to, 4G is not going anywhere. So they still have to manage the data traffic on both 4G and 5G uh, for a long time. And they, how do we leverage their investment they have already made? And how can we bring those operational efficiency in the network? Uh, Ericsson has been very pragmatic in, in uh, approaching this. And we have actually recommended a very well-defined uh, approach, a very well-defined approach, which ties to the more technology and business reali reali reality. Uh, that's where we bring our 5G core, dual core, uh, 5G dual core is where you bring 4G and 5G technologies uh, on the same platform. And it kind of serves both and others basically uh, on the, from the same common platform. Uh, and it's all cloud native uh, on the service-based architecture. This gives a lot of flexibility and advantage to service providers in bringing down their operational cost when you have one common platform serving different access technologies, different access technology, 4G, 5G, 3G, and others. It gives that flexibility to have one uh, ONM and bring down the operational cost and also drive some uh, automation use cases more effectively. And uh, we have been very actively working with our service provider on this dual mode core. And it kind of helps the service providers to in their migration strategy how whenever they want this migration to happen from 4G to 5G, it becomes much easier from this dual mode core. What industry challenges does Ericsson continue to face during this evolution to 5G? And related to this, to ensure scalability and readiness for 5G, what questions should operators be asking of themselves? I think great question. I think challenges when, uh, when there is innovation, flexibility, and as you can see, 5G has an opened the door with so many use cases. Uh, so when you talk about enhanced mobile broadband, massive IoT, ultra-reliable, low latency, there is so much flexibility 
provided by the software suites. Uh, we need a cloud native transformation with a network slicing. One thing what we see that uh, uh, one challenge we see as we are moving very fast, it's very also important to look at some of the automation aspects. Some of the automation aspects in the network. Uh, it's important for our uh, service providers to look into embracing some of the automation and delegation from the start. So it, there could be a quite good balance between a stable environment and innovation. That's where all service providers need to look at all the competence in their cloud journey uh, around their resources, uh, processes, and also in terms of competence on cloud native and uh, DevOps when we talk about CI, CD, and how they're embracing automation, orchestration into the network and what kind of network slicing they need and how they're going to use it. So that's on the service provider side. On the vendor side, Ericsson is taking, uh, we have taken a lot of very significant steps uh, to because as the market is very dynamic, as you can see a lot of disruptors in the market, a lot of new technologies. We have built a lot of uh, center of excellence. We have invested a lot of uh, in, in our people to bring up the competence in the region across the world. I'll just give an example of North America. We have center of excellence. We have a very solid competence build, a lot of new use cases, innovation. We have hubs, 5G hubs and 5G campus. You heard about our 5G factory in Texas. So that's kind of gives us an advantage of taking those challenges and working closely with the customers and serving them much better. Now, you've already mentioned partnerships and the ecosystem, but can you tell us some more details about your collaboration with Intel? Yes, Intel and Ericsson, they go a long way back. Uh, so we have, our collaboration has been great. We have been collaborating on many fronts, uh, talking from radio based station development to uh, optimizing applications and also our infrastructure optimization. I'll just touch on two uh, areas where our collaboration has been quite uh, active. One is on the software defined infrastructure, SDI manager, software defined infrastructure manager. When we are working, as, as we all say, uh, we've been saying agility, flexibility, they've been now, they're the new norms. When you deal with the 5G, you need that flexibility to, def to deploy your infrastructure, open cloud or cloud infrastructure from a central data center. SDI manager, we have been very closely working with uh, Intel on the rack scale architecture where we can manage a commons, we can from a central place, we can manage a hardware pool. Uh, it brings that operational efficiency to deploy things remotely uh, needed at edge and other location. And the second I want to mention about our effort around optimization. Uh, this is around the scalable scalable processor uh, in our user plane function where uh, we have been very closely working with Intel uh, to help optimize some of application and in terms of capex per uh, gigabits per second or it's a power per gigabit per second. And this has helped us to uh, look at some of the places where we see improvement in optimizing uh, the cooling, cooling power uh, and also uh, the footprint. So collaboration, I think there is a lot of momentum. I think one of the one of the reasons this collaboration is working very strongly is because our goal is same, to serve our customers in the network to, with the predefined software, predefined software to help them to bring down their total cost of ownership, more software defined uh, tools and to bring the total cost of ownership. And that's going to be the key to actually harness the benefits of 5G. Uh, and as I said, this probably would help to evolve the new ways of working and new uh, technology to be embraced by all the service providers. And our collaboration has been great there. That's good to hear. Avinda, thank you very much for joining us on the program. And don't forget, you can watch additional interviews and discussions on 5G as part of the Intel Network and Edge V Summit series. But for now, thank you for watching and goodbye.